Hey there guys, I just want to apologize for the lateness of this video. I obviously have been taking a slight little break due to it being Christmas and New Year. So with that, of course, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you all. I hope you all had a wonderful, wonderful one. But let's make 2022 the best year we can definitely make it to be. And let's carry on with this video. So Luca came out on Disney Plus and was not given a theatrical release due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But whereas Soul had the exact same treatment a year before, that film captured, confused and dug deep with lots of audiences. Luca is a film that kind of confused me. There are loads of things I love about this film, but for everything I love, there's something dragging it back. Hi there, it's me, The Average Critic, and let's talk about Luca. Also, I really need to get used to saying this in my videos, but spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Luca, I probably am going to be talking about a few spoilers. So for everything that is great about Luca, something drags it down, and for everything that is bad, something makes up for it. First off, let's talk about the animation. Now, in any animated movie, you have to mention the animation. Some can argue that if the animation isn't great in an animated movie, it doesn't stop the story from being much worse. You take a look at a film like The Good Dinosaur. If you see my review, I said how even the animation of the characters in that movie are a little cartoonish and doesn't necessarily match the beautiful backgrounds. I did not mind it as much as other critics or audiences because I thought the characters told a thoughtful, composing enough story. It also helps that they are dinosaurs. But for me, Luca has that same problem. Not only is the world they live in look stunning and makes me want to visit Italy, but it's also the fact that character animations don't match the background. I know the animators were going for a very specific style, but for me, it just doesn't work, especially when you compare to Pixar previous films, which are stunning to watch. But even though the animation is a little stale, the voice behind the characters are amazing. Once again, Pixar have gone back to roots of casting actors who have the right voice for the job. Jacob Tremblay, I hope I'm saying your name correctly, does a great job creating this young, vibrant voice of Luca, as well as Emma Berman as Juliet, who was easily one of my favorite characters. I have a strong interest in Italian culture, and to see it being represented in a strong and warm way is lovely to watch. If the setting makes you feel engrossed in the world, the cast definitely make you feel like you could just reach onto your TV screen and touch it. They really did do an incredible job at voice casting this movie. But as I said, for every positive, unfortunately, there's a negative. Even though the cast of this film are giving 110%, they are let down by a script that plays it very safe. The script doesn't take much risks. We have great moments like Lucas sneaking off to play on the surface. His parents seem way too nice and we don't really feel the danger of him going off onto land. I mean, take Ratatouille as an example. Remy is warned to stay away from the human world because he can get fucking killed. He gets threatened and nearly burned alive when he first enters the kitchen, but there's something that keeps pulling him to the danger of the human world. There's a sense of adventure and risks. I mean, we are told that humans will kill Luca, but you never get that sense of tension like the toys being seen in Toy Story or Boo being discovered in Monsters, Inc. Luca goes to the human world because he's bored and because Alberto tells him to. I never feel like Luca makes any of his own decisions. Even Ariel in The Little Mermaid has an entire song about being fascinated by the tiny things the human world has. Even probably the most emotional moment of the movie when Luca betrays Alberto, which is a great moment, is almost done so quickly. It's a great scene that I really love and really made me react. It's over so quickly and is never given the emotional weight that it should have been given. Same thing goes for Alberto's whole character about his dad not being around. We get loads of nods of Alberto clearly having some abandonment issues, but is never strongly looked to in the story. Even the main villain of the film who is this bully doesn't seem that much of a threat because you can't really take him seriously. He's not a bully, he's just a whiny jerk. The bully of this film is how I feel about Flash Thompson in the new Spider-Man films. He's just not a great character. He's not a good bully character worth overcoming, especially in this film, which has some coming of age theme quality throughout the film. That's another thing that also made me disappointed about this movie is it doesn't have a strong enough coming of age quality to it. I really enjoyed the aspect of Luca wanting to go off to school. It works throughout the film and especially as the finale of the film, it is really, really sweet. But considering this is meant to be about the ideology of those friends you make in the summer, I didn't get much of that moment at all. The climax at the end works, but those scenes during those moments just seem a little bit distracted, mainly because Luca and Alberto just care about getting a scooter. As soon as Luca starts learning things from Julia, I start to enjoy this film much more. 
One thing I do love very much is the music. As I said, I have a strong love of Italian culture, so all the Italian new songs and the original score are top notch. Even though my final score in this film isn't going to be incredible, I was hooked in the opening from the music. Luca has this lovely down to earth score, which I really love. This film's themes of friendship and meeting friends in the summer is really reflected in the score and I love that. I will admit, same with the script, the music is quite safe though, and I won't find myself humming it like I do with other musical scores, but I did find myself enjoying it when watching this movie. As I said before, everything about Luca very nearly becomes everything we love about Pixar films. Strong emotional adult themes, and a bittersweet meaning full of emotional beats that hit hard. But Luca just doesn't go there. Everything feels like they were going there and never quite hit the mark. It all feels clean and very safe. We never get a moment to feel like our characters are truly lost or struggling because minutes later they are dealing with their problems in a very positive manner. Once again, making this film feel much more like a Saturday morning cartoon from Nickelodeon. It doesn't make it bad, it just makes it disappointing. Just when you think it's going in a great direction to probably make you bawl your eyes out in tears like most Pixar films do, Luca pulls you back like it's scared to take risks. The ending of the film for me is the only scene which does this in my opinion. It offers this beautiful, bittersweet ending. I really love Luca on the train, but everything before that just feels low quality compared to the ending. Luca is a coming of age movie about friends you make during the summer, and for me had a really interesting concept. I remember going to caravan clubs and making friends during short periods of times and feeling the loss of perhaps never seeing them again. So Luca has a heart in its film, but somehow struggles to be brave to let loose, go deep, and really find out what truly matters. Perhaps if they make a sequel, I would love to see what they do. So after all that, it gets my professional rating of 5 out of 10, and my personal rating of 6 out of 10. This film isn't bad by no means. Children will enjoy it, and so will the adults. You won't find yourself remembering it as much as you would want, but you can definitely see yourself watching this film again. So thank you for watching me and for anyone who has watched all my review videos of all the Pixar movies. Of course, I'm going to be carrying on with this series with future installments. I am also going to be reviewing all the Pixar shorts on Disney+, Plus, so look forward to my next videos with them. I'm not going to lie, I'm probably going to keep doing all content Pixar related on this channel, as I really love talking about it. I've been building my channel very slowly, and I really just want to condemn it down to just talking about one sort of thing, and Pixar is a true passion of mine. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and make sure you hit the notification button so you never miss any of my videos. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of Luca. Let's discuss. Remember, you can follow me on my social media account so you can keep updated. You can find little personal things about me just in case you are interested. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Doing all the Pixar films has been an absolute delight and I can't wait to keep sharing content as the response on my videos have been absolutely incredible. I've only been doing YouTube now for a few months and I've been absolutely loving it. But I hope you enjoyed yourselves and let's crack on with the new year and make it all fun and worthwhile. So thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next one.